on the west coast of Florida this week, toxic algae have begun to reappear. As Lisa Desjardins reports, it has again shed a spotlight on the importance of the environment in these elections. <laughs> Rob Merlino spends as much time as he can on the water here in Venice, near Sarasota, on Florida's west coast. A self-employed marketer, he likes to say the pier yeah. is his home water office. Waste. Oh, I got something. In recent months, though, he was forced off the water. This piece of paradise where he moved to enjoy life has been plagued by environmental problems. He showed us the water today. This is not what it would look like normally. It would be more of a bright green when it's churned up with the sand. This is bad. And his pictures of it last year. See how turquoise it is? That's what it should look like. In Florida, a host of water problems are rising as election issues. The toxic red tide algae spread from the Gulf Coast to Miami, burning beachgoers' eyes and lungs and killing fish, dolphins, sea turtles and manatees by the dozens. You can see the green algae. PBS NewsHour reported on this crisis earlier this fall. In other areas of the state, Lake Okeechobee and on the Atlantic coast, slimy, rancid blooms of blue-green algae spurred health warnings. And in South Florida, there are rising concerns about rising sea levels and climate change. And this year, the environment has become a political force, especially in Florida's U.S. Senate race. The Republican candidate, Governor Rick Scott, saw his polling numbers go south as red tide algae bloomed. Scott's opponents point out he cut budgets for environmental programs and that under his administration, state workers were told not to use the term climate change. This is why Scott lost libertarian and usually Republican voting Merlino, who can't believe he's heading toward a vote for Democratic incumbent Bill Nelson. I know I'm not going to vote for Rick Scott. Bill Nelson is woefully ineffective as a senator. Rick Scott has been overtly harmful as a governor, so I will choose woefully ineffective over overtly harmful every day. We want to make sure that people know whatever goes in that drain is going to end up in the Gulf. Issues that motivated families on Saturday morning, labeling storm drains to try and prevent chemical dumping, which feeds algae blooms and exacerbates red tide. Water is probably the most important issue. Tampa real estate agent and lifelong resident, Republican Deb Tamargo, has built her life around the water and the outdoors. She believes Rick Scott will help, pointing to his leadership during recent hurricanes, saying he only cut environmental funding during lean years and has increased it recently. She believes voting a straight Republican ticket would mean more help from Washington and the Trump administration at a pivotal time. We have a, a rare opportunity to elect Ron DeSantis as our governor, Rick Scott as our senator. As long as Donald Trump is in the White House, this is a trifecta for the environment. This is a win for the environment. Clean water! Meantime, some Floridians are organizing and rallying in reaction to the growing algae problems. Democrat Nadine Maricki is part of a nonpartisan group, Hands Along the Water. Do you think the environment could swing this election? Absolutely. The people that I've talked to in these, uh, all these groups that I'm with, with for clean water, I'm talking to longtime Republicans, and they're voting Democrat because of water. We're not going red or blue or purple or green. We're going water. These roadside rallies got smaller after red tide subsided a few weeks ago, but the winds off the Gulf Coast are shifting back, again pushing red tide waters toward what usually are some of the most beautiful beaches in the world, and potentially again shifting the political tides in a major election year. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lisa Desjardins in Venice, Florida.